Today's scripture reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. This morning, we start a new series, and this new series is on, this is supposed to be the hint, by the way, sorry, I didn't know if I said that. It was said in my head, and you didn't hear my head. Listen closer. Um, what are we talking about? There we go. The Bible, God's Word. We are going to have this same concept drilled in our head, and it is all Scripture as God breathed. All scripture is profitable for teaching, rebuke, correction, and training in righteousness. That we may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I start with an interesting allusion. Our themes this week are the word spread. The word applied and the word sought. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to share the gospel the first time? The very first time you do anything, it's hard, isn't it? I mean, if you go to a new place, it's hard, isn't it? Okay, anytime it's the first, it's always a little bit harder. Y'all remember the first time I came here? Y'all thought I was special. <laughs> y'all know y'all thought I was special. Yeah, you finally figured out I was, but it's okay. You did, because what was it? It was the first time I'd ever been with y'all, and I was nervous, right? Y'all are scarier looking than I expected. And what happened was, it was a little bit difficult. And today we're going to talk about sharing the gospel, and I want to break it first with this illusion. Y'all saw me. The first time you ever get the Bible out to share it, if it's the first time, it's a little scary, isn't it? How many remember the first time you ever tried, <laughs> I like the word tried, to share the gospel with anybody? Anybody remember that? That whole, uh, I, I kind of know what the Bible says, but what if they ask weird questions that I just don't know? And I intentionally left my keys. That was not an accident. Because I wanted to demonstrate just how hard it is, that very first time it is, to get the word out. That very first time to get it, because think about it, if I want to share the gospel with you once, I just got my Bible out, right? If I want to do it again, do I need to walk over there, grab my keys, unlock it, get it all out again? I, I hopefully didn't lock it back up. That would have been smart. And that is what I want to present to you today is we are called, and this is not a call for Paul only, this is a call for all of us, that the word needs to spread. And God didn't do something mighty and majestic and go... I'm going to write my name up here. I'm going to come personally and talk to everybody. He did something mighty and majestic and even greater. He formed the church. God did something greater than himself speaking. He sent a church for all time. A church that no matter where he is, no matter what he's doing, no matter who it is, there is somebody who's in their circle. Somebody who is connected with them. And today we're going to talk about that. Spreading the word. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 1. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who ask, examine me is this. Do we not have a right to eat and drink? Do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles, and the brothers of the Lord, and Cephas? Or do only Barnabas and I not have a right to refrain from working? Who at any time serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat the fruit of it? Or who tends a flock and does not use the milk of the flock? I am not speaking these things according to human judgment, am I? Or does not the law so say these things? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing. 
God is not concerned about the oxen, is he? No. Or is he speaking altogether for our sake? Yes, for our sake it was written, because the plowman ought to plow in hope, and the thresher to thresh in hope of sharing the crops. If we sowed spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share the right over you, do we not mourn? Nevertheless, we did not use this right, but we endure all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the food at the temple? And those who attend regular to the altar have their share from the altar. So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. This is something this church does not fail at. This is something where the percentages work out in this church. We spend money in areas that spread the gospel. I'd like to say that's normal for every church. That's not normal. This church puts a lot of money into missionaries in at least six different missionaries. Six different mission places are paid for. And we understand the importance of, you know, money. Money talks. And we understand that. But here's the thing. This is not the only way that we do the gospel. Sometimes this is the least effective way we do the gospel. Because which would you rather have? Your friend tell you something or some stranger from across the sea? My friends, let's be honest. We would rather have someone we know, someone we've built a relationship with, someone who has fed us. Wait, I was thinking of Jesus again, sorry. Someone who shows up and feeds 5,000 and then teaches them. Someone who seals the sick and cares about our problems and then teaches them. I wait, I was thinking about Jesus again. And we do a great job of thinking that money talks. And it does. And it is, it is vital that we support missionaries. It is vital that we support the cause of Christ that way. But too often we think that in doing that, we've done our service. And the only thing I'm proposing to you is you are a better evangelist than any of those people. The difference is only who you need to be evangelizing to. Your top five. There used to be this phone commercial. You had your top five, and if you put them in, you could call them as much as you wanted, but everybody else, you know, you were going to pay. I don't who this was. But you had five people you could call, and you have this group of five. And most of us have a group that we talk to, you know, five people that we call most often, we talk to. And let me tell you that you are probably the greatest evangelist in the world for those five people. Those people that you have contact with, you, no matter how limited your knowledge, are probably better to talk to them about Jesus than anybody else. And those five people are going to suffer if you think that money is the only way we spread the gospel. Verse 15. But I have used none of these things. And I am not writing these things so it will be done so in my case. For it would be better for me to die than have any man make my boast an empty one. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For it would be better for me to die than any man make my boast an empty one. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. It would be better for me to die than have any man make my boast an empty one. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For I am under compulsion. For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have a stewardship entrusted to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge, so as to not make full use of my right in the gospel. I wanted you to focus on something, and I don't know if I just kept accidentally reading it. It says, For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. I am under compulsion. For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Let's do a little wordplay just a second. Preaching is not what I'm doing. Just make sure you realize that word is bad in this one. Preaching is not what I do. I what's do what's called prophecy. It fits under that. It means to speak. You on... Euangelion, also the word for evangelism. 
is the word we're using here. Evangelize. If I say, if I do not evangelize, woe is me. For I have to. I'm under compulsion. If I don't want to willfully, I need to. If I don't want to, I don't care about those five people around me enough to want them to meet with me in heaven. I am still under compulsion. I am still commanded as my duty to share. It is still my job to evangelize. And he says this, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Evangelize, if I don't share the truth with those around me, woe is me. Paul continues in verse 19. By the extent to which we need to be taking this. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all. So that I may win more. To the Jews, I became as a Jew, so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as one under the law myself, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may by all means save some. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. That word I said evangelize, we're going to say evangelize because I'm so bad at pronouncing Greek. And y'all don't like Greek. Evangelize. Evangelize with the evangelists. The message. The very message that we preach. And he says, I would become anything if I could win some more. He said, ah, though I'm a free man, I would become someone's slave if I could preach the gospel. That though I am free from the law and don't have to follow the old law, I would take that law on me just to preach to those who are under that law. I would come to them and I would do everything right just so I could make them. I am not required to. Paul, of all people, talks about how none of the old law is required for us, that Christ has set us free from it, and yet he's the first to say, I'd go under that law. I would suffer as a slave. If only I could win some more. And we're at something almost completely different. We're not even at the point of challenging ourselves to become weak with the weak or strong with the strength. We're challenging you to be you. That's the point we're really at. I am challenging you to be you. You're somebody's mama. You're somebody's daughter. You're somebody's son. You're somebody's parent. You're somebody's brother. You're somebody's sister. We're not even to the point where we're going to people and going, I'm not like you. Today's message is simple. Go to those like you. Start somewhere. And what's weird is once you realize that you've got to walk all the way over there, grab your keys, get it, unlock that Bible, and try it the first time. And once you've done that, you begin to share with those who are like you. It becomes easier. Because once you experience the power of God... You don't go away and forget it. You experience God working through you and sending a message and you go, wow, God, why'd you do that? I showed up and then you started talking. I was there. I am so glad you shut my mouth, though. I'm so glad you gave me the words. I am so glad that I did not prepare ahead of time what I was going to say. But in that hour, I trusted you. And once we realize how powerful God is when we just show up. Then this message will become more true at the end. When we try to become all these things to everybody. But right now's challenge I really want you to focus on today is. How hard is it to see this challenge and realize what he's asking you to be? You. He's not saying become a slave yet. He is saying right now be you. And once you're you and you've spread to everybody like you. Then you can worry about becoming the weak and the strong and the slave and the free and the Gentile and the Jew. But right now, just be you. 
And once you trust God to that point and you experience God, you can do things so that by all means, some will be saved. Because God gave you a miracle. The power to teach his message. He describes his message as the power of God unto salvation. That's how God describes his message of hope. He says, it is the power of God unto salvation. He says it. He says, this book is dynamite. That is a literal translation. This book is dynamite. It is extremely powerful. It is so powerful that it can save souls. Verse 24. We start by rejecting ourselves. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we, an imperishable one. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Think about it. How many of us showed up to Christianity and go, I showed up to the race. I, I got in that water. I was raised up. I am in Christ. I showed up to the race. Yeah, I was running with all the others. I was competing in Christianity. I, I was there. I was at the games. I didn't, I didn't try to win anything. I mean, why try to win anything? Why try to receive a crown that lasts forever? Why try to receive God saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. I showed up. Why show up to the boxing gym and actually hit the bag? Why don't I just go like this? It's easier because, you know, my hands don't get a sore, right? Why actually run? I might get sore. And you know that whole, like, build up in your legs when it gets sore from running? Yeah, I've tried to run before. You can tell. It wasn't very good. You got that soreness, didn't you? And he says, I discipline my body daily so that I can win. I'm not in this race to show up. I'm not in Christianity to be a Christian and, oh, that's good. I'm in this game to win. I'm in this game to go before the Lord and him said, well done. I am so glad you did what you did. I'm so glad I have these children because you decided to open your mouth. I mean, I shoved the words in, but you, you know, it was great that you opened your mouth. My Holy Spirit spoke through you, but I'm glad you opened your mouth. And the challenge of one. You've got five people. And the idea is that there are five people that you are close to. And one of them is likely not in Christ. It is likely that one person that you are close to is not in Christ. And I want you to take a second. Think about that one person. Get a name in your head. This person who you know the Lord comes back today. You're not going to be living with an eternity. You know they're going to be suffering eternity because they weren't right. They weren't ready. And I want you to get a name, a person you think of. And ask yourself if you want everybody to be showing up. Going to church is a lot like showing up. It is. You, you come here, you get all prepped, you get all set up, you get fed, hopefully. You get this message, you receive it, and then you've got this name, right? And you're supposed to run. Run! And you're like, well, I, I showed up. I showed up to the games. I got fed. That's where it ends. I'm finished. No athlete does that. You don't show up to the Olympics and just go, hey, I'm here. I'm going to sit in a chair. 
You go, I came to the Olympics, I'm going to win. I'm going to prove who I am. I'm going to show God that I want to run for him. NASCAR. The image is on the car. You watch NASCAR? You've got different cars and they all represent something. And they all run for somebody. And we've, we've been given a sticker that says, the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified on our car. And we can race our car and we can say, if we finish dead last, at least we showed up. We were a Christian. Or we can go in there and we can be like, if we finish first, we'll be on every news channel. We'll be on everything. And that car will be known and it'll be the car that is known as the gospel. And the only thing I really want you to think about today is that one person. Just one person that next year you're going you're gonna to run after. That one person that you're going to try to reach. That one person that you love. Enough to care about. More than just, eh, are you doing okay? More than just, well, you know, is everything okay in this life? And I want you to see that person and realize that God has given us his word. And we've got to take the time to take it out. And that first time is going to be hard. If you have never tried to share the gospel, the first time is terrible. The first time you ever try to do anything, it's hard. But the first time you try to get yourself out of the way and let God speak through you, it's nerve wracking It's difficult. But once you do it, it becomes so much easier. And we don't look at ourselves anymore as saying we showed up to the race, God. Isn't that enough? I mean, I know that you sent your son and he dies on the cross and he's beaten and he's mocked and he's spit upon. But I showed up, God. I went to church like you told me to. I read the book. I found the greatness of the gospel, and then I, I locked it away so it was safe, God. I, I buried my talent in the ground, God, so that when you came back, you'd have that talent. And that one person is lost. Second Timothy four, six through eight. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on the, that day, and not only me but also to all who have loved his appearing. There is a day coming. There is a day coming with final judgment, and there is only one choice. You either take the gospel in which all the work is done, or trust on your own righteousness and fail. The Bible is pretty simple. You want to know how to go to hell? Sin once. Good job. Excellent. You've already completed step one. And to go to heaven is to hear his word and believe in him. To believe the message that Jesus died and rose again for our sins. To confess that Jesus is actually Lord. To repent of our sins saying, hey, I've sinned, God. Only you can make it righteousness. Be baptized into him so that we are clothed with him filled with his holy spirit so that we can live for him by letting his holy spirit work through us and we come to the end and we say god we ran that race we didn't just show up we ran that race if there's anybody who needs to respond to the invitation of the gospel or if there's anybody who needs prayers or anybody wishes 
to submit to the eldership here. We ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing.